The GCF task force is a really important initiative um, because it's really showing leadership at the subnational level. Signing that declaration shows a serious commitment to reducing emissions from deforestation and degradation. And what's important about that is that many of these member states are in key countries, um, like Brazil, Peru, Indonesia. Um, and so there actually could be a massive um, positive impact from, from this pledge among these particular member states. Um, and C4 has, has been lucky enough to, to collaborate more closely with the GCF task force um, throughout this year, basically. And we participated in the annual meeting in Acre where there were several presentations um, by C4 scientists from the Global Comparative Study on RED. I guess there were two. One is um, lessons from RED proponents. Um, these are proponents of, of subnational RED projects and programs um, in, in six different countries and the challenges that these organizations and governments are facing in reducing emissions um, from deforestation and degradation, and, and the kinds of lessons that can come from those challenges to inform RED at a, at a broader scale. Um, that was one part, and then another part was actually some of the impact evaluation work that we've done in the state of Acre following policy interventions since 2010 until the present and the kinds of early impacts that we're seeing from some of those innovative policies. Political continuity is, is really important. So a lot of these countries are facing elections in the near future and there is a certain instability associated with that. Um, you have a set of governors now who are committed, but what happens at the next election cycle um, you know, being an optimist, we hope that it's, it's established enough in these places that it can't be affected um, by, a, by a simple election. For example, in the state of Acre, the passing of the state system of incentives for environmental services is key because it's a state law. So it, and it's now got an infrastructure around it, new institutions. It would be hard to reverse something like that. So, and other states and provinces are, are following suit. So it's that kind of, of institutional transformation that's needed um, so that these processes aren't vulnerable to, to a new governor or a new set of um, secretaries. I think what we're really seeing is the importance of valuing these bottom-up innovations. In the, we're talking all of, always about the Global Climate Agreement and that is obviously important, but this attention that's needed at the subnational level and the advancements that have happened and the faster pace, because we need a faster pace actually to make some of these, these, these changes happen. Um, and so not ignoring that and not, not only counting on the international framework, but also really placing value at, at lower levels. Um, and there's a lot of inspiring stories that are coming out of, of that level that, that need to be valued, paid attention to, and lessons learned for, for higher scale action. I think there is. I mean, even some of the, the, forest, the New York Forest Declaration, some of the Brazilian states have signed on to it, even though the, Brazil did not sign on to it. So, you know, these, these subnational entities take leadership at these events. Um, the Governor's Climate and Forest Task Force had, a, had an event here. Um, there, there is this attention. They're, they're at every event. They'll be at the COP in Lima. Um, it, it's not just about countries. It's also about these, these lower level jurisdictions.